This is a video over example 5 in section 3.7. So in this pro this section they ask you to um, they tell you that a rectangle is bounded by the x-axis and the semicircle y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. What is the length and the width so that the rectangle has a maximum area? Okay, now it tells you it's a rectangle and it tells you maximum area, which means my primary equation is going to be length times width. That's how you calculate the area for a rectangle. However, I need to have these in terms of one variable. Okay, now we already know that when we minimize or maximize a rectangle, we usually end up with the square. So let's see what that looks like on the graph. So they tell me I have this x-axis and I have a semicircle of this, which means my radius is 3. Okay, so if I go out 3 units in every direction, just not the bottom because I only have the positive square root. So it's basically a semicircle like this. Now I wish I could draw a better circle, but I'm not fantastic at drawing. So just bear with me. And pretend that's an actual like perfect semicircle, right? And I have a rectangle that's bounded in here, but bounded between the x-axis. So this is the rectangle that they're talking about there. Okay. Now is it like that or is it like this? right we don't know exactly where it is which rectangle exactly we're talking about um until we figure out the problem okay so it could be this one in the middle it could be a skinnier rectangle it could be a wider rectangle we have no idea what the dimensions are okay all we know that is no matter what the square looks like <coughs> i'm sorry what the rectangle looks like let's just draw a general one this distance is going to give us an x value and that same distance is going to be here okay and then this is going to give me a measurement there so if i know what this x value is i can figure out what this value is which would give me the height the y value okay so if i want to know the width of this particular um, rectangle my width would be w plus, or I'm sorry, x plus x. It would be this part plus this part, and it's symmetrical. It doesn't look symmetrical, but pretend it's symmetrical, right? Then, in order for me to figure out the length or the height of this, I would have to find out the y value. Now, how do you get the y value? From this equation right here. Okay, so then now this, if I simplify it, is just like saying 2x times 9 minus x squared to the 1 half. Because I am going to have to take a derivative of it, I do need to have that radical in, as an exponent. Okay, so now I'm going to take the derivative, and I do require a product rule. So the first factor times the derivative of the second factor and I will have to do chain rule, so 0 minus 2x plus the second factor times the derivative of the first, which is just 2. So then let's see, these are going to cancel and these are going to multiply by this. So I end up with negative 2x squared and this is negative so it means it's in the denominator. And then here I just end up with 2 times the square root of 9 minus x squared. I do have to get a common denominator before I find those critical numbers. So then I end up with negative 2x squared plus 2 times, these two will make the house pop off. And I'll still have square root of 9 minus x squared. So if I completely simplify, and actually this should be the derivative, right? We get negative 4x squared plus 18 over the square root of 9 minus x squared. So I can set my numerator equal to 0, and I can set my denominator equal to 0.
to find those critical numbers. Here I will minus 18 on both sides. I will divide by negative 4 on both sides and reduce. And then I will take the square root on both sides. And I do have to rationalize this. So I get plus or minus 3 square root of 2 over 2. So I have two answers. 3 square root of 2 over 2, negative 3 square root of 2 over 2. And let's see what we get here. If I square both sides, I end up with this equation. If I minus 9 on both sides, I end up with this equation. If I um, divide by negative 1, I end up with this equation. And if I square root that, I end up with plus or minus 3, which means I get 3 and I get negative 3. Now, <clears throat> we are talking about a width here, right? And we only want to consider the x value here. So because of that, um, we cannot include the negative values. This one is also not feasible because if x equals 3, then you're here and then you won't have a rectangle at all. You would have just a flat line. So this one doesn't make sense either as a plausible response. So the only positive x value it could be is 3 square root of 2 over 2. So that means that the width would have to be 3 square root of 2 over 2 plus 3 square root of 2 over 2. This measurement and positive x plus an equal measurement over on the other side. So you end up with 6 square root of 2 over 2, which is just 3 square root of 2. Now since this never gave me any units, it's just going to be 3 square root of 2 units. So that's one measurement. If I want to know the height, well that you get by plugging into your equation. So we get the square root of 9 minus 3 square root of 2 squared, which is 9 minus 9 times 2. Okay, actually, this is going to end up being an imaginary number, which made me realize that if we want the height, we actually should just be finding the y value for that x value that we found. And the x value that we found was this x value. So we should be plugging in this x value to find that particular height. So it's going to be, I'm sorry, 3 square root of 2 over 2 squared which means we end up with 9 minus 9 times 2 over 4, which means we end up with 9 minus 9 over 2, or 9 over 2, which means we end up with 3 over square root of 2, and again, if you rationalize it, we end up with 3 square root of 2 over 2. So this is the height of the um, of the rectangle. So we found the width and we found the height.